Okay guys, this is gonna be the uh, second advent Armageddon part 5c. Now we're gonna talk about the great slaughter and all the verses that come about that point this out because again, this is deep and rich. Our Lord Jesus Christ will first return to descending upon the Mount of Olives from the east, the direction of the sunrise towards which the temple is oriented. Uh, see Exodus 27, 12 through 13, that describes its uh, orientation. Ezekiel 11, 23 also, 41, 14, and 43, one through four. But in between his splitting of the Mount of Olives and his entrance into the temple at Jerusalem, the nations arrayed against Jerusalem will come to know the full fury of the Lord's wrath and of his zeal for his people, the vintage. The slaughter or vintage of Armageddon will be carried out by our Lord Jesus Christ himself by means of the terrible swift sword that proceeds from his mouth. We've already seen all the verses there. I don't think I need to go over that. It gets pedantic after a while. For the battle is the Lord's. 1 Samuel 17, 47, 2 Chronicles 20 through 15, 20, 15. Just as Pharaoh and his Egyptian armies raced after Israel into the dry bed of the Red Sea in order to destroy her and only to meet their own destruction at his hands, so the massive military forces of the beast have been in truth have in truth been led into a similar place of slaughter. Psalm one ten five through six The Lord is at your right hand, he will shatter those kings on the day of his wrath. He will render judgment on the nations, he will shatter their head. That's a reference to Genesis three fifteen once again, broadly throughout the land filled with corpses as a result. Isaiah 66, 15 through 16. See, the Lord is coming with fire, and his chariots are a whirlwind. He will bring down his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For the fire, for with fire and with the sword, the Lord will execute judgment upon all men. And many will be those slain by the Lord. Let's see here. Big old verse. Uh, Revelation 19, 11 through 21. And I saw the sky opened up. And behold, a white horse, and the one seated on it was called Faithful and True. And in his righteousness he, he renders judgment and makes war. And his eyes were aflame with fire, and on his head were many kingly crowns, with the names written on them, which no one knows except he himself. And he is dressed in a robe, splattered all about with blood, and his name has always been called the Word of God. And his armies were, follow were following him in the sky, mounted on white horses and clad in white linen and pure. And a sharp broadsword proceeded from his mouth, wherein to smite the nations. And he himself will shepherd them with an iron, with an iron staff. And he himself will trample the winepress of the furious wrath of God Almighty. So I think, yeah, let's keep going. And on his robe and on his thigh he had the, his name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel, a single angel, having taken a stand in front of the sun. And he cried out in a loud voice, saying to all the birds of the sky, Come gather together for the great banquet of God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of generals, and the flesh of horses, and those who ride upon them, and the flesh of all these wicked men, free and slave, small and great, small and great alike. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war with the one riding on the white horse and with his army. And the beast was snatched up and the false prophet along with him, those who had, the one who had performed the signs in his presence and had thereby deceived those who had received the mark of the beast, even those who were worshiping his image. Those two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with sulfur, and the rest of the beast forces were killed with the broadsword, which came from the mouth of the one riding on the white horse and all the birds gorged themselves on his flesh. On their flesh. As our context given above, again in total shows, the Battle of Armageddon is described as the trampling down of the vintage of grapes in a wine press, a process which cannot help but splatter the one doing the crushing with the blood of the grape. This extremely vivid image is meant to impress us with the graphic nature of our Lord's slaughter of the armies of the beast, for the victory of Jesus Christ in Armageddon will prove beyond any doubt the folly of those opposing him. Thus, his millennial reign, built on a decisive victory carried out by irresistible force, will set the tone for a time of unparalleled prosperity during our Lord's perfect rule, wherein no disobedience or rebellion will be tolerated, thereby allowing for the righteous to live completely in peace. Genesis 49:11. He, Judah, and thus the Messiah, will tether his donkey to a vine, his colt to the choicest branches. Uh, Matthew 21, 1-8, right there. He will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. There you go. Uh, Isaiah 63, 1 through 6. I love this verse. Who is coming from Edom, from Bozrah, with his garments stained crimson? Who is this robed in splendor, striding forward in the greatness of his strength? It is I, speaking in righteous, righteousness, mighty to save. Why are your garments red like those like the one like those of one treading a wine press? He said, I have treadin', treadin the wine press alone, for the nations no one, from the nations no one was with me. I trampled them in my anger and trod them down in my wrath. Their blood splattered my garments and stained all my clothing. 
for the day of vengeance was in my heart, and the year of my redemption has come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that no one gave support. So my own arm, in other words, the Messiah, worked salvation for me, and my own wrath sustained me. I trampled the nations in anger, in my anger. In my wrath, I made them drunk and poured out their blood on the ground. Hmm. Jeremiah twenty five thirty through 32 Now prophesy all these words against them and say to them, The Lord will roar from on high. He will thunder from his holy dwelling and roar mightily against the land. He will shout like those who tread, tread the grapes. Shout against all who live on the earth. The tumult will resound to the ends of the earth. The Lord, then, for the Lord will bring charges against the nations. He will bring judgment on mankind and put the wicked to the sword, declares the Lord. This is what the Almighty says. Look, disaster is spreading from nation to, eight, to nation. A mighty storm is rising from the ends of the earth. Here's Joel 3, 12 through 16. Let the nations be roused from their places and let them come to the valley of the Lord will judge, Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit in judgment over all the nations on every side. Send forth the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come down into the wine press, for it is full and the vats overflow. For the great is their wickedness. That's awesome. Revelation fourteen seventeen through 20. Then another came out of the temple in heaven, and he too had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out from behind, from before the altar, the one having authority over fire, in other words, judgment. And he shouted in a loud voice to the angel with the sharp sickle, saying, Send forth your sharp sickle and gather up the cluster, clusters of the earth's vineyard, because its bunches of grapes are ripe. And the angel cast, cast forth his sickle on the earth, and he gathered up the vintage of the earth and threw it to, into the great winepress of God's wrath. And the winepress was trodden down outside of the city, and blood from the wine winepress went forth up to horses' bridles, for a distance of 1,200 stadia. It's approximately 143 miles. That's insane. As in the case of the destruction of Pharaoh's army, the slaughter will be complete, leaving no survivors. All who participate on behalf of Antichrist and his father, the devil, will receive fully, will be, are deemed rather, are deemed fully capable for their actions and will pay with their lives. Isaiah 34, 2 through 3. The Lord is angry with the nations. His wrath is upon their armies. He will totally destroy them. He will give them over to slaughter. Their slain will be thrown out. Their dead bodies will send up a stench. The mountains will be soaked with their blood. Ezekiel 38, 21 through 23. I will summon a sword against Gog and all the mountains, declares the sovereign Lord. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment upon him with plague and bloodshed. I will pour down torrents of rain, hailstone and burning sulfur on him and on his troops and on the many nations with him. And so I will show my greatness and my holiness, and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations. They will know that I am the Lord. Awesome. That was part C, part 5C. Sorry, I'm getting into this a little too much. Makes me emotional. Really want to see this, guys. So bad. <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Again, um, part, I guess, D will be next. Uh, and again, I'm trying to break this down so each piece can be... Um, referenceable individually because these are big and again all of these scriptures cover this so no reason not to give it its full uh its full credit like comment share subscribe let me know how you did thumbs up if you would uh, notification bells people are getting kicked off the channel i'm noticing it's either that or they just don't like what i have to say but either way i am not a pastor in a church for a reason i told somebody yesterday i think i would be a very good uh professional pew emptier so Thank you for sticking around with me. This is all uh, as blunt as I can make it without being uh, too sharp, I think, perhaps. Maybe you let me know. Uh, but stay tuned for the next part. It's coming up soon. And thanks for sticking with us, guys. Bless you.